Hey guys, hope you're all doing well today. So alongside their gameplay, Nintendo World Report released a load of screenshots of personal skills of characters and I'm going to be going over those screenshots now and I'll leave a link to their video and website in the description. First off is Aliz. It's divinely inspiring, we've seen this before and adjacent allies deal plus 3 damage and take 1 less damage. That's a really useful skill for basically the entire game and especially early on it'll be very very strong. Alfred's is self-improver, we've seen this appear before, I didn't know what it did but I thought it was a weight action and here we are, if unit uses weight without attacking or using items, gain strength plus 2 for one turn. Now that does feel kind of weak because we've seen weight skills in the past which give more than plus 2 to stats and early on it will be quite good where 2 strength is more relevant, but late game I'm not sure how good it will be as a skill. Yunaka's is trained to kill, while unit occupies terrain that provides an avoidance bonus, grants plus 15 crit which I really like as a skill, that's really useful, I love getting crits and I think that will be a very strong skill throughout the entire game, especially with, you know, um, time rewind because crits are always much stronger there because you can abuse them more and being able to hide in rushes in most classes so I guess she's slightly weaker as a flyer because you can't get those avoidance bonuses and terrain so for all covert classes it's going to be really good because you already want to be in that avoidance terrain because you get bonuses for being in that terrain. Louise is Admiration and it says if two female allies are adjacent within two spaces this unit takes two less damage during combat. I'm not sure if that's Louis admiring the girls or if those are the girls admiring Louis. Either way, good on him. And yeah, that's quite a useful skill again for an armoured knight or lance armour as he is. And yeah, again, strong anything like this where it's very small amounts of buffed stats or damage reduction is always going to be stronger early because of the lower numbers. But still will be a reasonably useful skill late game but kind of hard to get off when the maps are bigger when you need two within two spaces so okay useful early but late game not sure again alchris is get behind me when an ally within two spaces is attacked grant strength plus three to unit for one turn reasonably useful plus three strength and you don't really need a heavy prerequisite because him just being behind you know a tankier unit or a dodge tank because he's an archer he's not really gonna want to be frontlining anyway decent skill and the three strength will be relevant for a lot of the game so i think that's a bit of a better one than some of the others so Chain's personal skill is generosity and when this unit uses a healing item adjacent allies also recover the same amount of hp now i've never been that big a fan of these kind of abilities and i feel like why would you not just use a healing character? However, this does give you the ability to heal two units without having a designated healer. So whilst using vulneraries and concoctions and etc, this is actually very useful. I think I did see, and someone points out to me in the comments too, that vulneraries are 15 healing now rather than the original 10. So early on, and honestly in points late game, this is very useful. I think this is surprisingly good. It's not normally the kind of skill I'd like, but yeah. I think that's actually a very useful skill. Lapis's ability is share spoils and if there's an ally within one space grants hit slash avoidance plus 10 at the cost of crit minus 10 to unit. So I think that is quite good. Losing the crit isn't nice of course but if you have her in a choke point where there's someone behind her like Alquist for example and she's standing at the front and is gaining hit slash avoidance plus 10 just to you know dodge units and make sure she hits back and that's a pretty useful skill for dodge tanking considering her high 14 speed that we can already see at this point so this should make Lapis pretty strong and you can get your crit back on the player phase by not being adjacent to an ally. If I go back for a second we can actually see that she combos well with her lord and ret other retainer when an ally was in within two spaces attacked, so Alquist could be two spaces behind Lapis, and then in the middle of them both could be Citrine, who heals up herself, and also the adjacent allies. So I know I said earlier that one other she can actually heal your entire team. If you have four people around her and use a vulnerary, you could heal your whole like you know four units as well as Citrine. That's really really strong. Wow, I'm surprised by how good that is. Thinking about it now. If you have the right setup and there's no time limit to your turns, you don't have to be moving quickly and you can just move your units back and heal up. Super useful, especially if you don't have healers. Gene's personal skill is unsurprisingly expertise and he gets enhanced stat growth when leveling up. So he'll obviously be the classic villager type character that we've seen before, the trainee. And yeah, he starts as a martial monk which I think we saw somewhere before, but yeah, it's good to know that. And the fact that he gets extra stat growth will mean he'll be good in basically any class because late game he'll be a bit of a beast because of this expertise. So 
yep the classic villager type character just train him up level him up he'll be weak at the beginning but he'll become very strong as the game progresses Chloe's is fairy tale folk and we'd seen this a bit before in some previous gameplay and it says if a male and a female ally are adjacent within two spaces unit deals plus two damage during combat now the two spaces means that it's not too hard to get off and again will be useful early game i'm not sure how useful that is late game plus two damage for having two specific type allies within two spaces especially when you're a flyer and kind of want to be roaming about on your own a bit in many situations due to your high movement and ability to pass terrain so i'm not too sure how good this ability is um, I'm sure you will be able to actually replace these personal skills like previous games if you collect one from other classes So you might want to replace hers and other people's skills that I've talked about Decent early game, plus two damage and on smaller maps it will be quite easy to get off so not a terrible skill Anna's is make a killing which is just perfect for her and may obtain 500 gold when unit defeats a foe Trigger percent luck So basically what you need to do is you know just do loads of side battles with Anna Just farm a load of money Anna and Jean together, XP and, uh, you know, stats and money just for free, bang, 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 just clean up everyone with them, easy, you're making up pennies, business is booming. AC's personal skill is energized, and when unit recovers HP using an item, grants strength plus two for one turn. That seems kind of bad, to be honest, strength plus two and you have to use a healing item, so I guess it's okay if you have a dancer with her because then she gets strength plus two for two turns. But again, I'm never personally a big fan of using items for healing. I'm always trying to get my healers to heal because it gets some XP and it's you know more efficient generally because you want your combat units to be you know partaking in combat. Now, again, depends how good healing items are in this game, and it appears they will be better, so you will be wanting to use this a bit. Is this that great a skill? I don't think so. Saline's is gentle flower and it means that recovery item used by allies within two spaces heal plus 50%. Now normally I would think mm, not great but again combo with citrine and you are making some money with them together. You can just vulnerary with this healing what? Uh, if it's 15 it would be healing what, 22 I think to up to five allies that's crazy just for a run away and if you use high healing items you're just healing up fully just everyone so yeah combo with citrine is good on its own eh, sometimes useful if you have like louis in front of her and he needs to heal it is useful lucron's is moved to tears we've seen it before but we didn't know that when an ally joins a chain attack in this unit's combat unit deals plus two damage right so i guess moves to tears in, in terms of he feels honored that the ally is helping him which is actually kind of sweet and yeah that's not too bad again i think that these plus two damage things are much better when there's not really something that the unit needs to do this is just part of the interaction rather than you know you need to force your units to have allies near them this is just you know you want to be doing chain attacks anyway obviously it requires an ally but it's kind of part of the interaction anyway but again not that great two damage for chain attacks uh Banders is Alabaster Duty, and if unit is adjacent to the Divine Dragon, grants crit plus 5 during combat to both of them. So, not terrible, somewhat useful, but crit plus 5, is that all that? Yanaka's getting 15 for doing something she wants to do anyway, and this requires you to be adjacent to a specific unit. Again, a lot of these standing adjacent to people skills are going to be very dependent on the maps, and will always be better early game when the maps are smaller. But... Yeah, late game, again, not a very good skill. Crit plus five, I'm sure will make a difference sometimes and you will want to be triggering it, but yeah, not overly useful. Bam's personal skill is Crimson Cheer and it says if unit is adjacent to the Divine Dragon, grants avoidance plus 10 during combat to both of them. Now, I think this is much more useful than Banders, not only because it's double the stats, but because getting avoidance by being next to each other is much more useful than crit to me because avoidance is something you want in terms of enemy phase but obviously useful but avoidance is very useful for making sure you survive Alea's taking some damage on their turn and your turn and you want to go heal them with fram adjacent you know using a heal then it's good that they can both stand together and be a lot safer so i think that's a much better skill and that will genuinely be pretty useful in early and mid game and possibly late game in some situations too. Fram's speed is not that low, she's 10 and losing some, so I assume she's got 12 or something. 
So yeah, pretty speedy and her and Alea might be able to do some good dodging together. Plans is Verdant Faith. If unit is adjacent to the Divine Dragon, grants hit plus 10 during combat to both of them. So very similar to Frams. Still useful, again more useful on the player phase actually. Quite useful if you're both attacking the same unit. Alea attacks a unit, attacks an armoured unit or you know gets attacked and Fram heals them and then next turn there's units surrounding Alea and Fram, they're being attacked. Plan can come in and help Alea finish up. Both of them can you know attack together, increase their hit chance. I don't know how good it is for Clan if he's a mage because we know that um, spells will not be affected by, their hit chance will not be affected by terrain. Not as useful for him, more useful for Alea, but you might be changing Clan's class. Yeah, so again, being forced to be near a unit, not overly great, but I can see where it'd be useful cleaning up on the player phase. Geomance is fair fight. If unit initiates combat, grants hit plus 15 to unit and foe if the foe is able to counterattack. So just a very good way to finish things off. I like the thematic uh, nature of this, fair fight. You can see that part of Diamant's character through it. You know, it's very just and knightly. Lo I'm loving it. Um, he likes a fair fight. But a useful skill for finishing off units that are low. Obviously, if you're using a blade, you've got to be careful because it means, you, you know, if you use a blade, then the opponent is going to hit you first and you'd rather not obviously increase their hit chance so yeah i've got to be wary of that with diamant he's going to be better with swords i think still a very useful skill however let me talk about this blades on the enemy phase might be good because and in certain matchups when you know they're going to have 100 percent hit chance but you might not it will be good there i think this will be quite useful throughout the entire game ambers is aspiring hero and if no other units are within one space of unit or foe Runs hit plus 20 at a cost of avoidance minus 10 during combat. So a very good finisher skill once again. Amber's going to want to be running in far to finish off these units that are low on HP and just taking them out, ensuring it with his high hit chance and then backing out with Kanto, I'd imagine, if you stay as a Cavalier. But yeah, a good ability, useful finishing units off. The avoidance is not necessarily relevant, but you do have to be careful on the turn after when you lose avoidance because you're adjacent to no allies and the enemies might be attacking you. So maybe attacking with Amber and then moving some people in near him afterwards. Ivy's is single-minded, which I guess, you know, says something about her character too. And during combat with a foe who was also unit's most recent opponent, grants hit plus 20. So I guess that's encouraging Ivy to have enemies attack her and then she can finish them off after. Quite interesting. I guess that's useful against bosses. If I'm being very honest, I don't think this is that good a skill unless, you know, all units can have high stats. However, if you look at Ivy's stats, she does have quite high defense and res, so she's surprisingly tanky. She's got really nice overall stats, just all round balanced stats, apart from her luck. So, actually, not too bad on her, but hit plus 20 on a unit you've already faced. Is it going to be that useful, especially for a unit with you know, more movement due to them being a flyer. Uh, it's okay. Forgetsu's is a blinding flash, and if unit initiates combat, inflicts avoidance minus 10 on foe during combat. Easy, simple, and very useful. Harder for the opponent to dodge, get those woe downs out as he's doing, and just run in, make sure you don't miss, hit the crits, lovely. Uh, I, I think that's very useful. Ensures you're going to do better against foes when you're initiating, and yeah. I can play with that skill, it's just going to be useful and good. Zelkov's skill is not quite, and if foe initiates combat, inflicts a hit minus 10 on that foe during combat. So again, another useful skill. Doesn't really have any requirements, apart from the fact it's enemy phase. He can do some great dodge tanking, his speed is ridiculous. He's only level 11, he has 16 speed in comparison to his other stats, it's crazy. So yeah, and he's a covert, so slap in a forest and he is not getting hit. For days. Super good skill throughout the entire game, I personally think. Hortensia's personal skill is big personality, and when using it, uses the healing staff, grants radiant plus one. Let's talk about this skill, it's quite interesting. Early game, very strong, because increasing heals range from one to two is massive. You know, doubling the range of a, of a staff, big. But for other staffs, uh, if you're using physic or whatever and it's got you know 10 range plus one is it really going to be that useful mm, sometimes it will always be somewhat useful 
if she's using staffs, but it's not the best skill. However, I do think it does help. And when there's going to be staffs, oh, it, sorry, it does say when unit uses a healing staff, so not amazing because you can't use those, you know, block staffs and, you know, whatever we're going to have, warp and rescue and etc and trap things like that we don't know exactly all of them i'm sure a lot of them are revealed but i haven't seen too many of them yet so only healing staffs uh it's okay not a great skill but quite useful early with heal gold marie's is disarming sigh so happy 2.0 <laughs> if foe is male inflicts hit minus 20 on that foe during combat wow so that's interesting when using gold moon make sure to check that your foes you're facing are going to be male because that's really useful Plus 20 uh, avoidance basically in any combat against a male unit. Don't know what percentage of enemies are going to be male and female, but damn. With high speed, she's going to be an amazing dodge tank. And this has got me very excited to use her because hit minus 20 is really big. I think this is the best skill I've seen yet, personally. Rosados is stunning smile. And if foe is male, inflicts avoidance minus 20 on the foe during combat. Love that. Very interesting, you know, between those two that they have very similar skills. And Rosado will just be great at finishing units off. Points minus 20, massive, and yeah, just the male requisite. And it's not even just for when you initiate combat. It's also um, during the enemy phase too. So yeah, a very useful skill if they attack you as well. You can make sure you get counters. Another good skill. Again, it depends how many enemies are going to be male, but yeah. Lumera just has Unbreakable, prevents unit from being broken. I'm not sure if this is a personal skill, to be honest. This might just be on some boss units and things like that. We'll have to see, but yeah, interesting. This is the final one, and it's an enemy boss that they post a picture of as well. And it says they have the Veteran tag, and prevents unit from being broken, negates damage from effectiveness. So this might be on quite a lot of bosses to make them a lot harder to beat. You can't just run up, break them and use effective weaponry, etc, etc. And just kind of cheese them and beat them too easily. So yeah, that was all of them. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think it's really interesting to see all these skills and I look forward to seeing everyone's personal skills. It's not just about how good they are, but kind of what it tells you about the character. I enjoyed looking at these and look forward to me doing a video about all the classes in Engage soon. I'm going to make sure I just know all of them and we'll be able to go over them before making the video because I want to be sure. Thank you, have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you guys later. Ciao.